Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another gorgeous day here on the farm. Today we're gonna to be pulling the little Honey Badger Ventrac tractor into the shop here and we've got some work to do to it. So I broke some stuff. I break things on the farm. That's what I do, that's my thing. So uh, from spindles on the mowing deck to the center pivot right here, we have worn the center pivot in this Ventrac. So I have really put it to work. I own this Ventrac, this is not a sponsored video. I bought this Ventrac out right after our one year lease with it. It is an absolute beast of a little compact tractor for property maintenance and mowing. Does it take the place of a compact, subcompact, or utility tractor? No, I don't think so, but I think it is a great estate management tractor and a great tractor for those projects around your farm, home, or ranch. So come along as we do some upgrades. We've got a suspension seat to put on this. It's gonna be rad. We're gonna do the full hydraulic system service. We'll show you how this deck hooks up, unhooks, and we'll just do a little bit of fun fun and around with the Ventrac. We'll talk about what the ownership experience is like with this machine after, I guess, three years now. All right? I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is the ownership experience of this machine. This has been an awesome tractor, not one hiccup other than fuel system problems, and the fuel system problems were from the crappy fuel that you get nowadays at the gas station. So no other issues. We run off-road diesel on this machine. It does super cool. First thing I want to show you is how the deck goes on and off on this machine. It's really cool. First thing we'll do is disconnect our hydraulic lines right here, just like so. Very easy. There are two little slots right in there. Very well thought out, well engineered machine, man. There aren't many American companies out there building stuff like this, this well, well engineered machine. Everything is well engineered to the fact that when we replace the center pivot, I'm sure it's gonna be super, super easy because it's so well engineered. So we'll disconnect those two, then we'll pull this guy right here. Make sure your tractor's off. That's a little lever that disengages the belt, the drive belt right here. And the drive belt just hangs on a little notch right there. And we can re-engage that. And then we have a lever on this side that we raise. And now the deck is completely released from this tractor. We'll just back out from the deck. If you're in a situation like this where we're on a hill, you probably wanna chalk the wheels on this deck so it doesn't roll off down the hill. And when you go to reconnect, all you do is drive these two bars up in there, lift them up, and that raises the deck and you bring the latch back down like I just showed you uh, from the bar in the front right there, that little black bar. So we'll disconnect and we're gonna pull it in the garage. So what we gotta do is we got a drain plug under the front and a drain plug under the rear. The front hydraulic reservoir serves as a reservoir for running all the hydraulics in the machine, the hydrostatic drive and everything. And the rear is just like a pumpkin basically. And the rear just houses about four quarts of, uh, or four to four and a half quarts of hydraulic fluid to keep everything lubricated. Do I anticipate the hydraulic fluid being gross? Hmm, maybe, it looks a little bit on the brown side. It fills up underneath the hood and what you really have to worry about with the Ventrac tractor is the fill tube, I'm told, where you fill up the hydraulic expansion reservoir is ahead of the filter system. In other words, where you fill it up, it's ran through the machine before it runs through the filter system. So we're replacing the 25 micron and the 10 micron hydraulic filters, which are right there. Very simple, very easy. Let's get to wrenching. And yes, I do have a bit of a 90s car problem. <laughs> Every car I've got is from the 90s, uh, aside from this critter right here. I do have a 90s car problem. What can I say? I'm living in high school. <laughs> So we're gonna break out the oil change bin and I'll show you what I do for oil changes. I have a specific bin and a way to organize this that's really, really helpful. This is the car wash bin. And this is the oil change bin. So, and it has oil all over the top of it. I must've sprung a leak <laughs> somewhere. So all my stuff for changing oil is in the oil change bin. So I don't have to go digging and looking for uh, wrenches and and such. So we've got our wrenches that we're going to remove our uh, 
two hydraulic filters real quick. And the two hydraulic filters will be pre-filled, like I said. Ventrac takes a special oil, I think it's a 5W30 uh, synthetic hydraulic oil. So here's the Ventrac specific 5W30 hydraulic oil. 25 micron filter, 10 micron filter. Here goes, let's see if we can make a mess. Pull the bottom filter first so that we don't pull the top filter and drip fluid all over everything right here. So we want to make sure we've got this one secure and then we'll do the top one. And loosen this guy up. I didn't put it on Gorilla Tight, which is awesome. Very smart of me. Okay, we'll remove this guy and pour out our hydraulic fluid. I'm gonna lose some fluid in this process right here. Be sure you have a nice rag, okay? These are the most awesome shop towels ever guys i'll post a link down there in the video description i buy them by i think the package of 25 or 50 and they're huge they work absolutely awesome and you can reuse them they're like surgical towels they're lint free type surgical towel hand tighten and give it one full turn after a hand tighten that's what the manual calls for now we'll remove this one these are wix filters that i'm taking off we'll be putting back the genuine ventrac filters be as gentle as we can so we don't make too big of a mess. We're gonna get a little bit of oil on, so you better have a pan underneath. There we go. And once again, up in here, we're gonna wipe everything nice and clean before we install our new filter. New filter, pre-filled, oil on the seal right here. This is a 25 micron filter. Two hydraulic filters, one for big particles, one for smaller particles. We're up under the front right here. We'll go ahead and remove this uh, 5 16 Allen screw. This one is really snug. I don't know what the deal is with this thing, but we'll find out. Can't get it, we might have to take it to the Ventrac dealer. I don't want to strip it, that's for sure. Kind of frustrating there. We might just be changing filters today. I think we are just changing filters on the front transaxle. Oh, I don't want to strip it. I'm the world's worst. It's stripping stuff out. So we're gonna skip the drain. There is your ownership experience. I, uh, this is the first time, and again, we're doing this early. We're under 400 hours and it only calls for this at about 500 hours. Now it does call to change the filters uh, a little more frequently. So I don't know, we'll top her off a little bit. There is a fill reservoir right up here under the hood. So we'll give her a top off right there. It'll save us a little bit of money in hydraulic fluid anyway. Here's the rear of the machine and the transaxle in the rear needs to be changed too. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get that done. Again, this is a 500 hour service and this is under 400 hours. Up under here, very easy to access. There's a guard up underneath this and we'll go up underneath the guard and this takes a 3 16 uh, wrench. Now, if you don't have the optional, and this is the option right here, this is the three point hitch option. Uh, if you're gonna drain your fluid out from the front transaxle, the three-point is ran off of the front transaxle, so you want it in the lowest position and you want the machine level and straight. Fingers crossed. Oh, that one was way easy. I don't know why the other one was in there so tight. This one is super, super easy. I've actually got it to where I can take it out with a it's finger tight now. And the fluid looks almost new in here. While that drains, we're gonna go up here, up to the top, and this is where you fill it. There's a little plug right here, and uh, this plug takes a socket. I like a socket, a three quarter inch socket on that plug, and that will open that critter up. Slipping that plug out, that's all it is, just a plug, very simple. Three quarter inch socket fits right on there. They say put thread locker on all but the last two, so we don't wanna introduce thread locker to the uh, hydraulic system. Got a pretty cool way of instilling the hydraulic fluid here too because it's kind of back in a hole. We'll replace our drain plug, snug it down. Once we get it tight, we'll give it one and a half turns, okay? That's what the uh, owner's manual calls for. Oh yeah, that stuff was due to be changed. Uh, service inter interval says 400, but man, that's the first change and it's a little bit dark, so. I'm glad we did it. All right, that looks way, way worse than the hydraulic fluid reservoir up there. And we're on our third set of hydraulic filters. So let's get our special tool here for instilling our hydraulic fluid. 
back into this gearbox. So if you don't have one of these, you ain't living right. This is the McNaught C16 suction gun. This suction gun will go in to a pumpkin, like on your rear end of your truck or whatever, and draw the fluid out. I've got one for clean fluid and one for dirty fluid. This is the one for clean fluid. And what we're gonna do is basically set this guy up here and we're gonna draw out our hydraulic fluid. And this takes four and a half quarts of hydraulic fluid. We just fill it up until it just starts to run out of this fill hole right here. I'll show you. Down into the bottom of the oil container, and we'll draw it up. This holds 900 milliliters, which is just about a quart. Very nice. We'll go over here to our machine. So we'll go right in here, nice and neat. Man, that makes it super simple. We should do this around five times and that should fill this critter up. We wanna watch it as we do number five. We wanna be at or below the level of this plug. We're getting close. That's it. Right there at the top. Cap her off and put this back on the shelf. McNaught C16 suction gun. We'll take our rag, wipe everything nice and clean right here. And I've got some thread locker on this critter. I'll go ahead and get them into place. Isn't it nice when a plan comes together like this and you get sweaty and dirty? <laughs> Life is good, guys. Uh, everything looks awesome in the rear right here. I do have weights that go in place and I had to pull these weights out of the way in order to access the rear of the machine. We'll keep an eye on things, make sure we don't have any leaks. Check it next time I park. I think everything looks good to go. Uh, these weights are quite heavy uh, and they're to offset the weight of the uh, uh, front loader on the machine. So drop them in place, slide them back and we're on to our suspension seat. Rad. Everything that's shipped from Ventrac is always shipped. Well, most everything is shipped in foam, like heavy, heavy foam. Check it out. They pay attention to their shipping containers. It's all foamed out. So nothing you get from Ventrac will, should ever be damaged because it all has this foam in it. Wow, that's nice. Cadillac. All right, this is our new seat. Wow. So all we gotta do is undo like four bolts and a plug and plug this critter in. The existing seat, there's really nothing wrong with it, but this thing, a buddy of mine, actually my neighbor, bought a Ventrac and he ordered this seat and man, is it comfortable. I got on his machine and I was like, oh, dude, I gotta have one. <laughs> All right, we'll raise the seat up right here and there are four bolts right here to undo and this plug. Go ahead and unplug that plug. Half inch bolts. I think this is gonna be like a 10 minute job. And I think this seat might be going in the skid loader. Tuck that back in there. off. Never miss the opportunity to wipe something off. I'm going to position my washers back where they were. Looks like we have two positions here. So the bolt holes are either here or here. We want them in the rear position. Let's set the new seat in its new home. Electrical hookup, it's right here. And there's a little grommet right here. We need to pay attention to that. Plug her in, press that into position, turn it. There it is, awesome. Final step, the seat's pinned down, that way it doesn't fall on top of you if you were to roll this machine. Just like that. Oh, that's gonna be so, so nice. Now, what did I fail to get? The armrest kit. I didn't get the armrest kit and I need the armrest kit. When you're riding on a vent track, your controls are right here with this lever, okay? So pretty much the whole time you're driving with this hand, unless you get the foot pedal kit. Let me turn this thing straight here. There we go, a little power switch down there. Now, so there's a kit 
for armrest right here and you really really need the armrest because if you don't have the foot pedal kit your arms are basically stationary left hand on the steering wheel right hand on the drive handle right here okay this is a hydraulic handle this is a drive handle and these are the three handles for the three point in the rear uh, there's also a pedal down here that you can step on so i've got the optional pedal which is awesome super duper upgrade the next thing we're going to upgrade is our canopy so there is a company that makes a canopy that blows wind down on you constantly so when you're out here mowing in this 100 degree weather which we're having a lot of right now all over the country you don't have to worry about sweating and or getting grass blown all over you because with a mower in the front you inherently get grass on you so this thing is blowing grass out to the right uh, with the uh, finish mower and typically if the wind is blowing just right you're gonna wear a grass sandwich the whole time inside under the hood here just of note the radiator faces backwards so with the backwards radiator you also have a filter in here and this needs to be cleaned out so these are the grass clippings that blow and get drawn back in the engine basically sits backwards and the radiator is right here instead of right in the front of the machine because the exhaust pipe is in the front of the machine. You watch the temperature as you mow. If it starts to get a little warm, then you know you need to check that and clean it out. So we always clean it out after or before each use. Belt on, snug it up, hydraulic lines. All right, we're hooked up, ready to go. Man, you cannot complain about that. Look at that. Now guys, you might be wondering, well, what about the center pivot? Well, I've got the new center pivot right here and the new center pivot was not needed. Uh, I got to looking and I was checking. It's not flopping around on the pivot. It was just me uh, thinking it was. So I've got it if I do need it, but it didn't need a new center pivot. Uh, awesome striping job. Tell me what you think guys. Tell me what you think about the stripe job. This thing, this Ventrac is an awesome, awesome machine. I'll never regret purchasing something that makes my yard look that awesome. Guys, please pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoyed this little video today. It's just showing you a little bit about the ownership of a Ventrac mower, tractor. Good times.
Thanks a lot. Pound the like button. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. Ridge Farm. It is absolutely crooked hat. It's never as easy as it seems, Snow, is it? This is the world's biggest hairnet. <laughs> got on his machine. I was like, oh, dude, I gotta have one. Oh, dude, you gotta have one. Can it be that easy? There he goes. Hey, everybody. Howdy ho.